Good day, my friends. We're at chapter 3, verse uh, 16 of the book of Second Samuel, picking right back up where we left off. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her to Baharim. I think that's how you say it. Baharim. <laughs> then said Abner unto him, Go return, and he returned. Notes. Now, Faltiel had been Michael's husband for eight years or nine years, and as well, he had no part, as far as we know, as it regards the situation between, uh, between David and Saul. Thereby, his sorrow at losing her excites sympathy for both for them both. I mean, and he's just kind of just being ignored. Now, should David have actually have done what he did? Well, inasmuch as his reasons were political, which I think I've already addressed pretty thoroughly. I think had he spoken to the Lord about the matter, the Lord would not have allowed such to happen. But for political reasons, people do some strange things. Verse 17. And Abner had communicate, communication with the elders of Israel, saying, You sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, by the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. Notes. If Abner knew all of this, and he definitely did, why did he wait this long? Well, regrettably, most believers will not do what's right until it's in their best interest to do so. In other words, if it costs them something, they will not step up to the plate, so to speak. Verse 19, And Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin. And Abner went also to speak in the ears of David and Hebron all that seemed good to Israel, and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David to Hebron, and twenty men with him. And David made Abner and the men who were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with you, and that you may re and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. Notes. Well, now there is no record that David's the Lord concerning this as well. You see, the Christian has a tendency to be in danger at time of war. And in the time of peace, however, you're probably in greater danger in the time of peace. Now, during war, he has, he has a greater tendency to seek the help of the Lord because he knows that it is the Lord alone who can deliver. But in peace, temptation is always, it, it's always there to just coast along and not really do a whole lot of things that are good. Uh, and you should also be very, very wary when all men speak well of you. That should be a red flag that something is up. And Abner and Joab are going to prove to be, uh, they're going to prove to be very, very bad things for King David, as we're going to continue to read. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the host who were with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came unto you. Why is it that you have sent him away, and he is quite gone? You know, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you, and to know you're going out and you're coming in, and to know all that you do. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sirah, but David not. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there on the fifth rib that he died, the blood of Asahel's brother. And afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. And let there not fail 
from the house of Joab, one who has an issue, or who is a leper, or who leans on a staff, or who falls on the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gideon in the battle. Notes. Hmm. What Joab did was wrong and probably delayed the plan of God probably for some years. It certainly wasn't a good thing to have a Joab in your life. Verse 31. And David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the buyer. And they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so fell you. And all the people wept again over him. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread or aught else, till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased the people. Notes. Obviously, they're starting to really, really warm up to King David, and they're starting to like him. Verse 37. For all the people in all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to kill Abner the son of Ner. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Notes. Now Abner was related to Ishbosheth as Joab was to David. Joab was clever, ambitious, bloodthirsty, and quite heartless. He was an ungodly man who deemed it politically correct to affect his zeal for God. You can look that in chapter 24, uh, verse 3, I think, of the last book. In, no, wait, in this book, actually in this book, Second Samuel. Uh, my notes are a little bit foggy. Anyways, in fact, Abner was morally superior to Joab, but yet Abner was a traitor to his master and a rebel to his God. He had no real heart for David or God's king, but was moved to help him by wounded pride. He reaped as he sowed, and however, and as stated, his reaping did not absolve Joab of blame, though. What he did was cruel and despicable and rotten. Yeah, chapter 4, we're going to have some more problems. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. Notes. Ishbosheth knew that the Lord had called David to be the king of Israel. However, as with so many, he wasn't that interested in the will of God, but rather of his, of his own self-will. And believe me, it's going to cost him dearly. It's going to cost him everything. Verse 2. And Saul's son had two men who were captains of bands. The name of the one was Baana, and the name of the other, Rechab, the sons of Ramoa, or Ramon, the Berothite, of the children of Benjamin. For Beeroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Berothites fled to Gittim and were sojourners until there until this day. And it looks like we'll have to pick up in chapter 4, verse 4 of Second Samuel. Thank you, and like always, God bless.